I know you've worked at a spectrum of brands from Unilever, from Newell, uh, many founder-led brands. Can you walk, walk us through what you learned leading large companies compared to the lessons you've learned working with some of the founder-led brands that I know you've had tremendous success with? Sure. It's a, it's a great, great question. Yeah, I've had the privilege to work in some really big companies with really big leaders and uh, had the you know great honor to acquire brands from founders that have spent their life's work building them. So a really interesting mix. And the, the, the sort of CEO I worked for at Unilever, Paul Polman, he was the first outside CEO that Unilever had ever had in its, its long history. And I was head of strategy at the time. And uh, so he and I worked on the transformation. I think I really learned two things from Paul. Um, as a leader, he had a vision that you could change the world in business. And he really wanted Unilever to define its place in the world. And he launched the Sustainable Living Plan, the real mission for the company, which they're an industry leader in. And that came out of his raw passion that you shouldn't run a company of Unilever's size without making a genuine difference across the world. And Unilever had lacked that mission for a long time. Like all stories, it was there with the founders, uh, but through the corporate journey, it had lost that clarity. And the other thing that was very interesting about the way Paul operated was he obviously came into a very internal based culture. You know, all of the Unilever leaders were lifers. They'd not known any other companies. And so he had this issue of how do I get change to happen? And he was very laser focused on giving real clarity to the broad organization. So a strategy on a page. The first thing we did was launch the nine for 2009, his first year that was rolled out to 170 countries um, and everybody was expected to get behind those initiatives. And so he had this amazing vision at the top. And then this real sense of how do you mobilize an organization with real simplicity. But actually, Paul spent less time in the middle where the strategy really hits the road, didn't do so much on portfolio and M&A, and probably didn't do as much as people expected in terms of growth capabilities and rebuilding innovation and marketing and growth plans. And so I actually ironically learned that from the founders I work with, where to those founders, there was nothing but the middle. And the middle is where strategy and execution meet, where everybody's laser focused on the one thing. And right. every day they're applying their energy, their creativity to have one thing go further. And sometimes it was a two, three year discussion. Sometimes it was a two week discussion, but there was always urgency. There was always preparedness and the culture was always built around that clarity. Um, and so I kind of, through those experiences, got the top, the middle and the bottom and realized pretty, pretty early on that you need all three for a business to really super perform. And I also learned that no leader has all three. And right. I'm a big believer in blending teams. The team I work with have very different personalities, very different skill sets, but they blend together to a complete mm. picture. The, the things I've achieved most in my career have been where you apply this builders and founders mindset. And, and I think there's clearly benefits of focus when you've only got one thing to do and you make life all about that. I think the founders tended to believe in partnerships, whether it's with customers or suppliers or employees. I think there was much more about longevity and trust, whereas in corporate, a lot of your leaders are waiting for their next job. And if they're on the low priority brand, they're going out of their way to get to the high priority brand. Mm -hmm. And so you're into these two, three year cycles and it's very difficult to commit to change if that's the talent cycle you're in. Even though it's perfectly understandable within the internal competition, that's what makes you successful. It's what job you get next, what job you got instead of somebody else, rather than what you did for consumers and customers. And so I found there was a, a, a sort of patience, a longevity, a long-term perspective, and, and that sort of came together in partnerships with people and, and other stakeholders that I think makes a big difference. Because if you want to do difficult things, it takes time. 